So welcome uh, again to the Cisco Community Live event. My name is Gabriela Godoy. I am a community manager of the Cisco community and host of today's event. Today we are going to talk about ISR 1100X 4G and 6G platform over overview and architecture. Before starting, I just want to let you know that the Cisco community is an online forum with over half a million members where you can get answers to your technical questions prior to opening cases with the talk. You can answer many questions or contribute and rate documents, videos, and blogs. The community can help you boost your career by becoming a top contributor and getting the technical community to know about your expertise. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Akash Kelalani. I'm technical marketing engineer in the enterprise routing view. So over the next uh, several minutes, I'll go over some of the use cases these platforms address. And then we look at the architecture and also some of the key capabilities of the ISR 1100X series platforms. We will then briefly revisit the existing ISR 1100 series routers that we launched in 2019. Uh, so as a first, we'll get started by looking at some of the use cases this platform addressed, and then we'll do a deep dive on the key capabilities and look at the platform after that. Uh, basically, the idea here is that by the time we visit the platform overview section, uh, you would know the problem statements that are being addressed with these routers uh, with the knowledge on some of the key capabilities uh, uh, already available on this. So let's get started by, by looking at some of the use cases where you can position ISR 1100 or 1100X series platforms you know, in your enterprise branch locations. So this is a typical uh, uh, secure SD-WAN branch uh, network where customers would need to deploy full SD-WAN security stack, uh, whether it can be you know, enterprise firewall or advanced malware protection or IPS or DNS webinar security. Uh, with the full SD-WAN security deployed in the branch, uh, you can now have a fully secure end-to-end -end network from branch to your hub locations or to your data center or any of these multiple WAN transports, uh, be it MPLS or your LTE connection or your DIA, direct internet connection. You can orchestrate your branch deployment using vManage uh, that can be deployed either in cloud or on-prem with full control over your branch network with regards to policies or for any configuration that matter. The full SD-WAN security stack is supported on ISR 100X series routers, and, and we are going to talk about that in a bit more details as well in upcoming slides. So if you want to position a router for small to medium enterprises, this is a perfect platform for such use case requirements where you are looking for a device uh, up to 500 Mbps of IPsec performance and with a better services performance as well. Uh, we do support zero touch provisioning as well. That is a mandatory requirement when it comes to when it comes to SD-WAN deployments. So basically you can just ship the device to your branch location, power on the device. You know, it gets an IP from DHCP, connects to PNP and gets onboarded in VMNA. Uh, so with the ease of zero touch provisioning and 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 with iOS XE, these platforms uh, you know are perfect uh, solution for your small or medium branch and deployments. So positioning this for small to medium branch deployment is one use case, but uh, we do have other customers who have deployed this at small scale hub locations to aggregate the traffic from multiple branch locations uh, where the throughput requirements might be very less. So it depends on what your actual throughput requirements are at your branch location and what services you are looking to use at each of those. And these routers can be positioned accordingly to address such use cases. Uh, SASE cloud adoption is another use case that is addressed by ISR 1100X series platform. So with more and more workforce, uh, you know, going remote and working from home and many organizations, you know, are shifting to some or all of the direct internet access. Uh, looking for multifunction cloud security, SASE becomes a key requirement that needs to be addressed. And with Cisco umbrella integration uh, that is available on these platforms, uh, you get a very broad set of security functions that till now required a separate firewall, web gateway, a threat intelligence, and, and such services. With SD-WAN integration with umbrella SIG, uh, we offer a solution that covers different aspects of security 
you know, that delivers a secure access of your applications. It can be a SaaS use case or your infrastructure as a service use case uh, with multiple cloud providers, whether it is AWS, Azure, or GCP. So this integration with Umbrella SIG is a key capability as it provides a completely cloud delivered security solution that removes the need to deploy separate security functions for your different branch locations. And some of the different use cases that SASE solution addresses is securing your endpoints uh, with advanced malware protection, we're securing remote workers when working from working from laptops with VPN or mobile devices, or when on public Wi-Fi, and also improving your incidence response, allowing approved apps and blocking the riskier ones and many other many other use cases. So here as well, ISR related X can be positioned for such use case where secure cloud connectivity can be provided with a cloud hosted security solution. And with Umbrella SIG integration available on ISR 1100X series routers, you can now avoid uh, deploying separate security functions at your branch and send all the traffic to be inspected across different security features and protect your network from any malicious attacks. Uh, this is a very powerful solution that is available on these routers and that too in a very compact uh, one RU form factor. AppQA with SDVAN is another use case that is addressed by ISR 1100X series platform. AppQA here stands for Application Quality of Experience. And for all of you folks who are aware of our WAS solution, AppQA brings in WAN optimization capabilities in our SDVAN stack. And it enables uh, traffic optimization for your overall better application experience for applications that are hosted either in your data center or in the cloud. With AppQE, you can accelerate uh, critical TCP sessions uh, and minimize the impact of high WAN latency. And it is useful even if you have a single WAN transport on some of your branch sites. It enables efficient path selection if there are multiple WAN transports. Uh, it provides TCP optimization for error correction and packet duplication, which are some of the key features that are available in the AppQE stack. Uh, AppQE and SC, uh, IOSXE SD WAN is based on um, a PBR2 TCP congestion algorithm uh, that brings in a lot of improvements over its predecessor BBR1 used in virtual OS. And I'll talk about this in, in, in bit more details in the upcoming slides as well. The overall AppQE solution provides a much better application experience for your SaaS applications or your business critical applications hosted in your data center or any of the cloud providers. ISR 1100X series routers with AGB of DRAM support full TCP optimization and also support forward error correction and packet duplication. So you can position these routers for your small to medium branch locations to address some of the problems associated with uh, application quality of experience. This is another use case for your uh, remote office where you would want to segregate the traffic and allow some of the business critical traffic are destined to your data center hosted applications uh, you, over your MPLS link and some of the other non-critical traffic uh, that can be sent over other links. So secure IPsec tunnels can also be established over your other WAN transports like LTE or internet to connect to the corporate network for any backup link connectivity use case as well. You can control the flow of traffic among end users, uh, stop all the traffic in one part from reaching another, or you can limit the flow of traffic either by type, source, or destination. Uh, this overall improves the operational performance. Uh, it reduces network congestion, in, uh, which in turn improves the application experience for your end users. And again, uh, using SD-WAN security stack here or the cloud-delivered security using Umbrella SIG, you can stop any of the harmful traffic from spreading across the network. And all the segmentation-related features whether you want to segment the traffic based on types or a destination can be done with either ISR 1100 or 1100X series platforms. Managed service provider use case, uh, that's also one of the other key use cases that is, that is addressed by ISR 1100 or 1100X series platforms. And with this uh, use case, what uh, the service provider will basically fully manage the CP at the customer branch location and offer services like MPLS or internet to connect to connect to the back office or to the corporate network. Uh, uh, both ISR 1100 and 1100X series platforms, they can be positioned as a CP device with a very rich uh, feature set of offerings for their customers with the support of ISXE SD-WAN 
uh, starting 17.4 release. So you can now offer a rich set of features with these routers and also enable different security functions, be it on-prem or cloud hosted. There are some key differences between ISR 1100 and 1100 X series platforms, and you can, you can use the right CP based on the specific customer use case that needs to be addressed. So all these different use cases, such as, uh, you know, managed service provider use case, app QE, security at your enterprise branch, uh, whether it is on-prem or cloud hosted, or if you want to do just simple segmentation of traffic based on the user defined roles, all of these use cases are supported on these platforms. Let's now dive a bit more uh, in details about this platform itself. And as you can see, this is a one are you compact form factor, mostly targeted towards small to medium branch deployments and can be centrally managed by a vManage. Uh, we are calling them as a, as a bridge to the feature rich ST band with ISXE primarily because you can deploy these routers with both Viptela OS and ISXE SD band. However, what you get with migrating to ISXE is a broad base of features that are not available with Viptela. And we'll talk about that in upcoming slides as well. So we have looked at different use cases uh, where this platform can be positioned, and now we'll move to the next section uh, to look at the platform itself. So we'll first start by looking at some of the key building blocks that make up the ISR 1100X series platforms. So security is an important aspect of our overall solution, and it can it is only it is not only part of our uh, software. For example, the SD band security stack that you get with the AGB memory support to protect your network, but it is also very important from a hardware and OS perspective. So we ensure that the security is not compromised at any given point, be it hardware, software, or a network security and it is it is very important to secure our products to protect against counterfeit hardware and software modifications as well all of our isxe based platforms have inbuilt hardware and software security functions that we call it as cisco trustworthy solutions this is a built-in security feature that validates the hardware and the software using cisco digital signatures or certificates when the device boots up so if any of these digital checks fails, the device will not let the software to boot in order to prevent the malicious code to run. And we do have, we do have a second layer of hardware authenticity check as well using the trust anchor module or the TAM chipset. It uses a uh, crypto check using SUDI certificate, which is, which is secure unique device identifier that is unique to every Cisco device and it is pre-installed Cisco digital certificate, which is very unique to the device. And this overall brings in a lot of authenticity and integrity to the ISR 1100 and 1100 X series platforms to protect against any attacks. So if you see here, there are six different layers of security with different aspects, which ensures that the hardware and the software are authentic before the device even boots up and is operational for handling the network traffic. All right, so far we have looked at some of the use cases that these perform address. We also looked at how trustworthy solution helps in to protect the hardware and software running on the device. Now let's look at one of the other key architecture innovation, which is dynamic core allocation uh, that is available with x86 uh, SOC architecture. So as you see here, uh, this platform is built on x86 system on a chip multi-core architecture or what we call it SOC architecture. This architecture is similar to what we have on other Catalyst 8300 and 8200 Edge platforms. And, and, with, and with this, we are able to provide dynamic core allocation feature. So this enables the system to boot either in service plane heavy mode or data plane heavy mode. By default, the system boots up in the service plane heavy mode as it is assumed that the customer would be running different services or security services and would need SD-WAN security at their branch locations. If the customers do not want to run any of these services, they can move to the data plane heavy mode uh, using the dynamic core allocation feature. And you can change between these two modes using a CLI that was introduced in 17.4 release, where customers have the flexibility to change the allocation, core allocation, based on service plane or data plane focus mode. With 17.4, if you change between these two modes, the device would require a reboot or for the changes to take effect. However, with 17.5 release, the device will not need a reload and these changes can be done in runtime. 
On top of this, we also have improved performance on these platforms with GPTK core chipset, uh, which stands for Quick Assist Technology. A uh, core basically allows for crypto and SSL offload uh, for better performance. And with with GPTK, uh, we are able to improve data plane performance for different features. And with Cot Engine, we are able to get better performance for the IPsec or for any other features for that matter. So with Cisco's uh, trustworthy solutions and, and support for SD-WAN security stack, the new x86 SOC architecture that enables dynamic core allocation. And with DPTK and Cot, we are not only enabling a ground up security approach where we ensure that the hardware, software, and the network are secure, but we are doing all of this you know, without compromising on any performance and scale so that you get a purpose-built platform to position for your enterprise branch location for varied use cases. Okay, with this, with this we come to our second uh, polling question. What does X stand for in the ISR 1100 X series platforms? Options are pluggable LTE, AGPT RAM, DSL, integrated LTE. Awesome. Once again, you can find this polling question on the right side of your screen. Okay, we are almost done. Uh, we have letter B. Okay, AGBD RAM, that is correct. I mean, uh, 20, uh, X. 25%. Yes, X, X in ISR 100 X series stands for AGB, so it supports AGB of DRAM to support the full SD-WAN security stack. All right, let's move further. Let's not delve in in with more details on what different features these platforms support and also look at performance and scale. So with ISXE SD-WAN support, uh, they do not only bring uh, pure play SD-WAN support, but also many other integrated rich services like SGT propagation, SD-ABC, custom application, and, and comprehensive security. So these are just some of the services that I've highlighted here, but there are many other features supported on these platforms with ISXE SD-WAN support. Uh, it also supports TCP optimization, forward error correction, and packet duplication, which comes under the AppQA stack. And we did look at this use case earlier. With, with AGB RAM on the ISR 1100X series platforms, it supports a full SD-WAN security stack with 4GB RAM SKUs, which are ISR 1100 series platforms. It supports only enterprise firewall with application awareness and DNS web layer security. And if I compare this with virtual OS, we have only pure play SD-WAN support and all other rich services are not supported there. These platforms are also capable of up to 500 Mbps of IPsec performance and can scale up to 3000 IPsec and GRE tunnels. This offers a very key differentiation for small to medium branch use cases where customer wants to deploy high density tunnels on these platforms. They also support a dynamic core allocation, which we talked about in a previous slide. And like all other Cisco SD-WAN platforms, these devices can also be centrally managed via vManage. When it comes to consist, uh, connectivity, these platforms have four gigi ports and ISR 1100X6G has additional two one gigi SFP ports. On our existing SKU, ISR 1100 4G LTE, we support integrated CAT, integrated CAT4 LTE, whereas on the other non-LTE SKUs, we support CAT4 USB dongle, which is currently supported only for Viptela OS, and support for ISXE will be there in the upcoming releases. One other important note here: there are two modes available on ISXE: control room mode, which is for the which is for the SD-WAN use case, and the autonomous mode, which is for your traditional ISXE routing use cases. And with the ISXE support on these platforms, we are only supporting control room mode and autonomous mode is not supported. Let's now have a closer look at the platform itself. So here you see two platforms, ISR 1100X4G and ISR 1100X6G. Both come with AGB of DRAM and support full SD-WAN security stack. Uh, these are purpose-built for secure SD-WAN uh, you know, branch deployments and come with multi-core x86 architecture dedicated core for control plane, uh, dynamic core allocation, all of which we looked at earlier. All these use cases that I mentioned earlier related to managed service providers, uh, you know, AQE, deploying different security services at your branch, either on-prem or cloud-hosted, or if it's just a simple segmentation of traffic uh, use case, all of these are supported on these two new platforms that we launched on 26 January this year. 
The 8 GB RAM on these queues enable support for SD WAN security stack, and the 16 GB flash uh, on the ISR 1100XXG allows storing of URL filtering database, uh, on box storing of URL filtering database for faster lookups. Uh, we will do a detailed comparison on both these queues, uh, you know, comparing them with the existing ISR 1100 series platforms and also with VH uh, devices in the upcoming slides. And what you see here on the front panel, both the platforms have four Ethernet copper ports, whereas ISR 1100XXG also come with two one gig SFP ports for fiber connectivity. Uh, we are also going to support both virtual OS and ISXE SD WAN on these platforms. So customers who are using virtual OS on the existing ISR 1100 series routers, they can now migrate to ISXE uh, SD WAN starting 1741A. I'll just briefly talk about the existing platforms, ISR 1100 series routers that we launched in 2019. So what we have here is uh, ISR 1100 4G, 6G and 4G LTE. All of these come with 4GB of RAM, 8GB flash and 4 gigi band ports. 1160 comes with additional two 1 gig SFP ports for fiber connectivity, just like what we have on the new ISR 1100 X60 platform. 1100 4G LTE provides CAD4 integrated LTE to enable LTE functionality on this platform. And just like uh, you know, 1100X series platforms, we are now supporting both ISXE SD WAN or Viptel OS on these existing platforms as well. Let's now do a side by side comparison for these platforms. So here you see ISR 1100 4G, which is an existing platform that was launched in 2019 as a migration platform for VH100. Uh, the new ISR 1100X 4G brings support for AGB memory to run the full SD WAN security stack on these platforms. Uh, also, with also note that these are non LTE SKUs, so they don't have any integrated LTE option available. However, we do have CAT4 USB dongle support available on these SKUs to enable LTE support. This is only available for Victor OS as of now, and with support for ISX SD WAN will be coming in future releases. Both of these platforms are one RU compact form factor have, and have external power supply and both have 4 GB ports and 8 GB of flash memory. Here you see ISR 1100 6G, which is an existing platform uh, that was launched as a migration platform for VH1000. So the new ISR 1100X 6G brings support for 8 GB memory to run the full SD-WAN security stack. And another difference is that with the 16 GB of flash memory support on the 1100X 6G, compared to 8 GB flash memory support on the 1106G. The additional flash memory support enables, uh, you know, on-box storing of URL filtering database uh, for better, faster lookups and better performance. And we have CAT4 USB dongle support available on these queues as well for Viptel OS uh, with support for ISX ESD WAN coming in upcoming releases. And again, both are one RU compact form factor and have external power supply. Let's now look at how these platforms compare with VH devices that I mentioned earlier. Uh, these platforms are launched in migration platform VH100. VH100 has two device models, 100D and 100M. And the ISR 1100-4G and the 1100X 4G are migration platforms for VH100B. And the 1100-4G LTE is a migration platform for VH100M. If you see from the memory perspective, uh, VH100B has only 2 GB of RAM. Whereas there is 4 GB of RAM on the 1100 4G and 8 GB of RAM on 1100 X 4G. Flash is also higher with 8 GB of flash on 1100 platforms compared to 4 GB flash on the VH100B and the port density perspective. VH100B has 5 GB ports, whereas on ISR 1100, uh, there are 4 GB ports available. Uh, we don't support any POE capabilities on any of these platforms and no integrated LTE support as well. However, we do support CAT4 USB dongle with Viptel OS on these platforms for non LTE SKUs. All of these support external power supply and are completely fanless design. And we only support SD WAN use cases on these platforms. So autonomous mode or non SD WAN use cases are not supported. Comparing now VH100M with 1100 4G LTE, we have higher RAM of 4 GB on the 1100 compared to 2 GB on VH100M, higher flash of 8 GB, and we support CAT4 LTE on the 1100 4G 
compared to stat 3 lte on the vh100 ham this is the integrated lte option vh100 ham vh100 ham as uh, internal power supply whereas there is external power support on 1100 and 1100 4g lte is a completely panelless design and supports sd band either with digital hours or rsxe sd band uh, let's now look at how 1160 and 1100 x60 compared with vh1000 these isr 1100 platforms are migration platforms of vh1000 both have 4 gb of ram 8 gb of flash vh1000 supports 8 gb, 8 GB copper ports whereas isr 1100 supports 4 gb copper ports and two additional gb sfp ports both have external power supply and isr 1160 comes with a completely you know fanless design uh, in a one hour form compact form factor both support digital sd band whereas isr 1160 supports isxe sd band as well the 1100x60 brings support for 8gb of tram compared to 4gb available on vh1000 and 1160 it also has 16gb of flash support uh, and rest of the feature support remains same as same as isr 1160 this is the USB CAT4 dongle support that we support on non LT SKU. So this, this dongle is supported only with digital OS right now. Uh, however, however, we are bringing in support for ISXE SD band in upcoming releases. These dongles support a maximum of 75 Mbps of download and 50 Mbps of upload speed. Supports only single micro SIM. Uh, there are different SKUs available for different regions depending on where you want to use this dongle and with which provider. So if you want to use the LTE functionality on the non LTE SKUs, you can use this dongle, insert this dongle into the USB port and enable the LTE functionality. However, like I said, this is only available for Victor OS right now. And we are bringing in support for ISXE SD WAN in the upcoming releases. So this is the front view of ISR 1100 4G or 1100 X 4G. For both the SKUs, whether it is a 4GB SKU or 8GB SKU, the front view looks exactly same, starting from left to right. Uh, you see the ground screw power button uh, you know you, there is a power input a reset button uh, which has uh, with the system led and status led so there is four gigi ports and a usb 3.0 port and also a one rj45 management port on the 1100 4g lte uh, we have two lte antennas sma connectors on the left and right side one of the antenna will be included with the device uh, whereas the other antenna that you can order it separately there is a LTE debug port, which is a micro USB port, and also a RSSI LED, which indicates the strength of the LTE signal. There is SIM LED and one micro SIM slot to insert the SIM, uh, SIM card. There also, there also have uh, four gigi ports and one USB 3.0 port as well. On the ISR 1160 and X60, it is very similar to what we have on 1100 4G or X4G with the difference being in the two gigi SFP ports available for fiber connectivity. Uh, rest of the options that you see here, like the four gigi ports, the USB 3.0 port and the one RG45 port for management is same as other platforms. With the LTE SKU, ISR 1100 4G LTE, we have two SKUs available, uh, the 4G LTE NA and 4G LTE GB. You can see the different regions here where these SKUs can be sub supported or used. With integrated LTE, it supports up to 150 Mbps of download and 50 Mbps of upload speed on both these SKUs. This is a simplified high-level hardware block diagram for the 1100X uh, 4G. So as you see, it is based on x86 SOC architecture with four cores. Some of the key benefits when comparing with VH100 or 1100 4G is support for dynamic core allocation that is not available on any of the VH devices and ISR and also on ISR 1100 4G that comes with 4 GB of RAM. There are four CPU cores available and with service plane heavy mode, these cores are divided between control plane, data plane and service plane functions. There is USB 3.0 for CAD4 pluggable LTE dongle support. Uh, some of the key benefits in terms of architecture are higher DRAM of 8 GB for services support, hot chipset to offload crypto and SSL traffic, GPTK brings in uh, with GPTK you get quicker data processing in the data plane for IPsec and other features and there is also TAM uh, which is trust anchor module which is part of the trustworthy solution to have the tamper proof device. 
this is the high level block diagram of 1100x60 and this is also based on x86 soc architecture with four cores some of the key benefits when comparing with dh1000 or 1160 support for dynamic core allocation that allows the flexibility to have different core allocation for service plane mode or data plane mode there is 16 gb of flash for on box storing of url filtering database and additional two sfp ports for fiber connectivity it also supports bot for crypto and SSL traffic offload. Uh, and also with GPTK, it brings uh, uh, you know, faster data processing for different features, including IPsec. This also has USB 3.0 support for CAD4 LTE dongle support, currently available only with CryptoLaws only. So this, this now brings us uh, to a third polling question. Uh, what OS do the ISR 1100 and 1100X series platform support? Options are VirtualOS, iOS XE SD band, VH or one and two? Great. The majority said, said letter D, A and B. Is that okay. right? Yeah, that's that's right. So both both these uh, platforms support uh, IOS XE SD band 17.4 uh, and, and Victor OS 20.4 onwards. Yes, that's correct. These are some of the feature differentiations uh, between Victor OS and IOS XE SD band for all these platforms. So what you see here, you know, on the on the left side, you have Victor OS with all these SKUs, and on the on the right side, you have ISXE SD band with all the SKUs, and then the different features that are supported on on the platforms respective to the OS. So the SD band security rows, the top five rows, shows the differentiation from security standpoint, whereas the bottom rows here show differentiation from some other features point of view. So as you see, with ISR 1100X series platforms, we support full security stack, uh, whereas with this 4 GP SKUs, only enterprise firewall and web, DNS web layer security is supported. TCP optimization uh, is supported with both Viptel OS and ISXC SD band. However, with Viptel OS, it supports BBR1 TCP congestion algorithm. If you remember during our app UA use case uh, slide, I just briefly touched upon this topic. So with Viptel OS, it supports a BBR1 TCP congestion algorithm, whereas with ISXE SD WAN, it supports BBR2 TCP congestion algorithm. And just to give you some context on this, originally, if you remember with the Ptel OS, it used cubic TCP congestion algorithm, which which you'll find in many of the new OS as well, you know, Windows, Linux, and in, in, in different OS. And this was upgraded to BBR1 in one of the recent releases. Cubic was cubic was more based on packet loss and use this parameter to calculate how fast the sender will transmit the data. You know, so basically, with more packet loss in the network, the overall throughput the overall throughput would would drop with cubic. However, networks you know today's networks they have improved a lot and and the links are much more reliable, and so hence the move towards BBR one, which used latency as a key parameter instead of packet loss that was that was used with cubic. So with BBR2 on ISXE, it brings even better performance improvements and it still considers latency as a key parameter, but improves on you know, different other parameters like, like variable latency links or queue lengths, et cetera. So overall, if you see the TCP optimization feature has got an uplift uh, with support of BBR2 uh, on ISXE SD WAN. Uh, there is a host of other features that are available on ISXE SD WAN. Uh, they are not available on Victor OS like SCAVC, SGT propagation. Uh, we also support service side NAT and route clicking on ISXC SD WAN side. And there are a lot of improvements coming in upcoming releases with respect to these features, which will enable full capability support for these two features on ISXC side. So, in a nutshell, with only pure play SD WAN support on Victor OS and uh, you know, with the fast changing requirement of today's networks. It becomes very critical for customers to move to ISXE to fully leverage the rich feature functionality that is available with, with ISXE SD WAN. And with SD WAN, that brings in a lot of improvements with application uh, quality of experience, especially with the AppQA stack. Now, let's have a brief look at the overall performance uh, that we can get with these platforms. So, what you see here are the five platforms that are available, you know, that are part of ISR 1100 and 1100 X series platform family. So the max throughput that you get is with 1100X60, that is up to 428, 428 MBPS with IPsec iMix profile. The least you see here is 399 MBPS, 
with all the 4G SKUs, which is 1100 4G, 4G LTE, and 1100 X4G. Now, if you see both 1100 4G and 1100 4G LTE that come with 4GB RAM, have max throughput of 399 Mbps, and it is also same for ISR 1100X 4G that comes with 8GB RAM. However, what you get additional on the 1100X 4G is a support for full SD WAN security stack that is only available on, on, on these platforms with 8GB RAM. The same would be applicable if you see here for ISR 1160G and 1100X 6G, where the throughput is same, 428 Mbps. However, with 1100X 6G that comes with 8GB RAM, you get the support for full SD WAN security stack that is not available on the 4GB SKUs. The integrated LTE option is also available uh, with only one SKU that is 1100 4G LTE and the support for CAT4 USB dongle is only available on the non-LTE SKUs. As even security supported only on these two top SKUs which, which come with the AGB RAM. Let's now look at these platforms from scale perspective. So on the left, we have scale for all these SKUs with virtual hours and on the right, we have scale numbers for all the SKUs with the ISXC SD WAN. So, for example, the numbers for 4GB RAM SKUs, which is 1100 4G and 1106 g is almost similar between virtual OS and ISXC SD WAN, except for the higher numbers on ISXC side for features such as DPI flows, C flows, OMP routes, and IPv4 routes. These are much higher on the ISXC side compared to virtual OS. On the 8GB RAM SKUs, which are ISR 1100X 4G and 1100X 6G, the numbers on the ISXC side are almost double of what you get with virtual OS. So, for example, there is 1500 IPsec tunnel support with virtual OS and 3000 tunnel support on the ISXC side. Similarly, if you look at any of the other features like OMP routes, it is 128K on the virtual OS side, whereas 512K on the ISXC side. In summary, if you have existing ISR 1100 with virtual OS, then what you get by migrating to ISXC is better scale on some of these on some of the features with good performance. And if you are looking to position ISR 1100 X series routers, then you get a much better scale with up to 428 Mbps of IPsec IMX performance. Let's now quickly understand the migration aspect of this platform. So. The ISR 1100 and 1100 X series routers, these are the only platforms that support you know, both the OS, virtual OS and ISXE SD WAN. And all the other Cisco SD WAN platforms support only ISXE. So with support of two OS, it brings in a bit of a requirement on how to migrate these devices from virtual OS to ISXE SD WAN. So we have enabled support for both these, uh, both these OS on these platforms starting 17.4 ISXE release and 20.4 virtual release. And if you are on a pre 20.4 release, these routers can only be deployed with virtual OS with minimum version supported is 19.2, which is when these existing platforms were launched. Starting 20.4 or 17.4 release, we support both these OS on these platforms and the minimum release support on ISR 1100X series platforms is 20.4 or 17.4. There are some Prerequisites if you have an existing ISR 1100 platform with virtual OS, let's say 2019.2. So, if you want to migrate to 17.4 ISXE release, you will first need to upgrade to 20.4 virtual release, and then only you can migrate to 17.4 XE release. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we are only supporting controller mode on these platforms uh, with support of ISXE SD band, so autonomous mode is not supported. So let's now look at a look at how a typical migration workflow looks like. So on the left side, we have two templates, one with ISXC and another with virtual OS. We have a device which is ISR 1100 running virtual OS, and that is tied to a virtual template in vManage over here. The first thing we need to do is in vManage, detach the template from the device. And at this stage, the device will still run with virtual OS. After this, we need to upgrade the device to ISXC, which will change the OS from on the device from VirtualR to ISXC SC band. And as part of this change, uh, it does an automated 
configuration change with, with, with a minimum set of configurations. Once the upgrade is completed, you will need to migrate or switch the device in the manage from Vipsala to iOS XE. Uh, please note that even after upgrade to iOS XE and migrating the device to iOS XE, the template is not attached to the device yet. That will be the last step, which is where you will attach the iOS XE template to the device and which will complete the overall migration from Vipsala to iOS XE. So I do have some screenshots. So the migration workflow that I've explained earlier, I do have some screenshots of that. So which, which gives you a visual feel of what the migration looks like from vManage perspective. So the first step, as I mentioned earlier, is to detach the template from the device running Vitala OS. The next, the next step in the upgrade process uh, is the, the next step in the upgrade process is to upgrade the OS from, to the, on the device from Vitala to iOS XE. And at this time, it does an automated configuration change with minimum set of configurations. And once you see the upgrade status as done, after this, you now migrate the device uh, uh, from vManage, you migrate the device uh, from Vipsala to iOS XE, which is what you do then in the next step here. And once that is done, you will need to attach the template to the device, which completes the overall migration process. With this, I'll now hand it over to George uh, to cover the next set of section. 